Spiritual warfare. Fear and lies are the devil's greatest weapons. Christians in Christ walking by the Spirit have nothing to fear of the enemy because Christ has given Christians ultimate authority over the devil and demonic powers and complete power by the Holy Spirit living in us. The demons are already doing their best to destroy us and love to make us believe that if we fight back it will be worse for us, which is a lie. It's worse for them. Another favorite tactic they use is to let us think they are not real or convince us that the thoughts or images that they put in our minds are our own. Even Christians with the Holy Spirit are under assault by them. They can and do project images and put evil thoughts, temptations, and lies and deceptions in our mind. They cannot possess a spirit-filled Christian, but that doesn't stop them from communicating, afflicting, or oppressing. They do this on the spiritual level, spirit to spirit, but we can as well. We only need to disagree with those thoughts or images and cast them down. Quoting relevant scripture is effective, but refuting and disagreeing with their lie is essential. Then tell the demon to leave, which is casting them out. In your spirit or out loud, they must submit to the authority of Christ. Also, understand that Christians, even with the Holy Spirit, give demons permission or legal authority to remain when they entertain sin or are in agreement with their lies or deceptions and don't simply tell them to leave. Only Christians in Christ with the Holy Spirit can fight this battle effectively. So if you're not a Christian or you're not sure, just stop watching this video right here because it's not really going to be of any help and go watch the video that I made, Essential End Times Christianity and give your life to Christ first and then come back and watch this video. Truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. John 8, 34. Do not sin. Do not give the devil an opportunity. Ephesians 4, 27. Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 3, 7. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Luke 10, 18-20 In this scripture, serpents and scorpions is talking about demons. In all things, we overwhelmingly conquer through Christ and his spirit. Romans eight thirty seven. It's only through our salvation in Christ that we have the full armor of God to fight the battle of spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 10-18 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly realm. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery arrows of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Even Christians cannot open the door to the spiritual realm without impunity or with impunity and expect everything to be fine. There are consequences to these actions, and grace preachers and teachers who preach freedom in Christ to engage in worldly activities compound the problem. There are real reasons for the scriptural admonishments against many activities such as divination, spiritism, mediums, witchcraft, tarot, etc., including many that we might not even associate with evil spiritual forces or activity. Participating in these things is giving spiritual entities permission to communicate or abide with you or interact with you. Reference Galatians 5, 19-21 for a helpful list of things that you should avoid. This opens the gates to spiritual deception and attack. Make no mistake, it is the demon realm that is behind this communication and activity. The angelic host, 
in the service of God would be going against God's laws to participate and therefore would be engaging in rebellion if, if they did. So it is not them. Deceased spirits are not roaming the earth able to communicate either. Without doing a complete Bible study, suffice it to say the dead are unable to make contact with the living on earth. It is the evil and unclean spirits that know enough to pull off deceptions to convince the ignorant that they are communicating with a dead relative or some kind and helpful spirit. An Ouija board, for example, is not a game or a toy. This is a tool in which the first step is to give permission and establish communication with the spiritual entity. In the recent movie, Ouija, they repeat this phrase three times throughout the movie, so movies that overtly establish this communication are technically opening that door to those participating and watching it. If it happens, the door needs to be reclosed where that movie played, and for those who are watching it and participating in it, just to be thorough. Just speak that you did not want to communicate. It was inadvertent, and that any and all unclean spirits must leave in Jesus' name. Other examples include fantasy card games involving any spiritual, imaginary, or mystical activities and card imagery, or tarot cards and readings. You never know what people may have attached to those spirit to those cards as far as spirits through witchcraft or any other thing that may be attached to them. And it doesn't stop there. It includes talismans or little objects which technically are false idols. These little objects that we um, gather or buy and, and think of them as good luck or, or dream catchers or this and that it's not of God it's of the demonic realm and they should be removed and avoided at all costs another tactic of the enemy is for them to work together so that you're dealing with more than one this is a stronghold and they work together against you you can take them out one by one for example they one might be depression another might be discouragement Another might be helplessness. So all of those work together to reinforce each other and make you feel like you can't battle them. Command unclean spirits to reveal themselves. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal them if they do not reveal themselves. Their names or a word revealing a function or affliction will come to you, and it may not be right away. But pay attention after you ask for this. It will be apparent to you when they are revealed, and may well be a word of some issue you have struggled with much of your life. Take them before your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in your heart so they are entirely exposed in the light and they cannot that they cannot bear. This will discourage them from returning or thinking they might bring others back with them next time for strength. Then renounce and reject what they do and command them to leave and never return and ask the Lord to send them to the abyss if that is his will. Now, after we deal with demonic spirits, we may still have habits or um, we have may have learned things in the flesh and then we're simply dealing with the flesh and having to overcome habits or um, battle with our flesh directly as far as being against the, the things that we desire in the spirit. Many things fly under the radar among Christians and are even accepted in our lives by pastors even as inevitable human nature under the excuses of stress, difficulties, limitations, jobs, demands, etc. Anything not in line with the fruit of the Spirit, including love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control are potentially spiritual attack. This can range from anger to irritation, depression to sadness, fear to doubt, dislike to enmity or hatred, impatience, selfishness, rudeness, profanity, etc. Angelic beings on direct orders from God with his message come to man and communicated in Old Testament times. They usually appeared as a living physical being, though, or a man, and did not use thought projection to communicate. But even Satan can appear as an angel of light. So, how can we be sure who we are communicating with? The short answer is close the door to evil or unclean spirits by disagreeing with them and telling them to leave. Repent of sin and close the door to anything or any activity that is sinful in your life. 
Establish communication with God in prayer regularly. The thoughts and feelings that God gives you will be completely consistent with scripture and the nature of him. This requires ultimately knowing scripture and biblical truth. Beyond that, if you're not sure, pray and ask. God uses some amazing ways of letting us know, things that can occur beyond random coincidence. You'll know if you're paying attention. You may know sooner if you're seeking. Sometimes you might just feel drawn to read something in the Bible, and it will have the answer flashing like a neon sign. If you're not sure, he will give you confirmations. The more you walk with God and in his spirit, the harder it is for the enemy to succeed in deceptions or temptation as you grow in discernment and spiritual strength. The temptation of Jesus in Matthew 4 has some helpful insights. In the first two recorded temptations, the devil says to Jesus, if you're the son of God. So both of those times, the underlying strategic temptation was to prove something or to try to get him to get God to act just to prove something or to make a point. The devil was casting doubt on Jesus' power, status, or inheritance. The same tactic is used against Christians. Then the third time, the devil, out of his own ability, greatness, love, and generosity, or even just a shortcut to glory, says he will help out Jesus and give him all he wants and came for, implying that may even be how God wanted to work it out if he just worships him. This is an overarching strategy that Satan uses on Christians and non-Christians and can be implemented in many different forms. Note the devil's, plural in general, misuse and errant application of scripture. It didn't end there either as Satan worked even through Jesus' disciples throughout his ministry to implement his schemes. Of course this didn't work on Jesus and he shows us how to be successful against him. Obedience and faithfulness to God and the knowledge of the truth of his word. If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John 8, 31 and 32. There's one more thing that is not in this write-up that I wanted to go over, and that is in one occasion, Jesus' disciples were not able to cast out a demon, and Jesus ended up casting it out and seeming rather disappointed in them and later they came to him privately and asked him why they weren't able to cast it out and he said mainly it was faith but that some only come out with prayer and fasting so that is another aspect to this if you come up against something that you're struggling with and it doesn't seem to let go and you feel it's a demonic force prayer and fasting which is a good um they're good habits to get into, obviously, anyway. But fasting can also not just include uh, from food, but fasting from things of the world also, TV or any other thing. Um, anything we engage in that is either of the flesh or of the world is also a fasting. And when we do it, we are denying our flesh and filling ourselves with the Holy Spirit. And this empowers us and gives us more strength against the enemy. And that's according to Jesus' own words. Only through prayer and fasting do some of them come out. And he went off in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights in prayer and fasting before he was tempted and before he began his ministry. And at the end of that, it says he was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. So there is a connection there with prayer and fasting and being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't suggest necessarily that you start off with with uh, fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, you might want to try to work up to that if you're, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I think only Jesus may be the one who can um, go that long, but the length of time can increase. You work up to it. The fact that you're doing it is, I think, what is important. So I hope you found this video helpful and some of this information helpful. It's really just basic, but very straightforward and very effective. Until next time, God bless you.